If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt to solve the question on your own before listening on. We can begin to solve this question by taking a look at the work kinetic energy theorem, which of course says that the net work done on an object is equal to the object's change in kinetic energy. Now we can rewrite the change in kinetic energy. Of course, any change in a quantity is the final quantity minus the initial quantity, and we have used 1 half mv squared for the kinetic energy. The question mentions that after he slides, his speed is zero. So what ends up happening is we plug in zero for the final speed, which is going to eliminate this term. So we can actually simplify the equation for work. And then at this point, we'll go ahead and plug in the mass of the base runner, which was given to us in the question, as well as the initial speed, also stated. And when we simplify that on our calculators, we get approximately negative 5.6 times 10 to the power of positive 2. And since we're calculating work, we will use the unit of joules. So that turns out to be the correct answer for part A. For part B of the question, we can recall that the net work done on an object will equal the net force multiplied by the cosine of an angle, which we'll refer to momentarily, and then multiplied by a particular distance. Now we have to realize that the base runner is being acted upon by a frictional force. And as the base runner slides to the right, the frictional force would point in the opposite direction, so we would have this kinetic frictional force pointing to the left. Since the base runner is indeed moving to the right, we know that his displacement is pointing to the right. And so when it comes time to plugging in for the angle, we just have to ask ourselves, what is the angle between that net frictional force and the displacement vector? And hopefully we would see from the picture that because they're pointing in opposite directions, the angle between them would be 180 degrees. So that's going to turn out to be the value for theta. For F, the force, we are going to use the kinetic frictional force and we just have to recall that the kinetic frictional force is equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction multiplied by a normal force. So we're going to be plugging that expression in for the force F in the work formula. So here we've made that substitution. We don't want to forget also that the normal force is going to simply equal mg. And that's true because the base runner is on level ground. And as his gravitational force mg pulls him downward, the surface is pushing back up on him with a force of equal magnitude. So in other words, the normal force will be equal to mg. So we're going to make that substitution. Next, we can recall that the cosine of 180 degrees is equal to negative 1. If you weren't sure of that, you could certainly type that into your calculator. So we can actually replace the cosine of 180 with a negative sign in front of this expression. Now at this point we can go ahead and solve the equation for what we're looking for. Remember, we're looking for how far does he slide, so that's going to turn out to be the distance s. So why don't we go ahead and divide both sides of the equation by the term negative mu k times mg. We'll do that on both the right side and the left side. And at this point we can begin to plug in the known values. Mu k was stated in the question to be 0.7. The mass again was stated. g is a gravitational constant 9.8. And then the work we had calculated earlier, so we'll be plugging that in for w. And when we simplify that on our calculators, we get approximately 1.2 meters for the distance that the runner slides. Thanks very much for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for additional videos. Also, you are welcome to send in your own question to the email address on the screen, and I will do my best to post a solution to it on YouTube.